Okay, so recently I bought these things. The True Engine 3 SE earbuds made by Soundpeats. It came with all sorts of stuff inside, including of course earbuds themselves. Some nice comply ear tips, a little instruction manual down the bottom. You know, the usual stuff, USB-C cable, little one, which is nice, more earbuds. But that's not what I'm here to talk about. What I'm here to talk about is this thing. So when I ordered these from China, it took like about a month or so. And I got them and I was very excited. And I thought to myself, oh yes, this will be good. Because I had read some great reviews about these particular earbuds. So I paired them to my phone, put them in my ears, and my initial impression was that they are one of the greatest sounding things I've ever put in my ears. They were, sounded fantastic. So I took them out of my ears, I put them back in here, and about, you know, an hour later, I tried to put them back in my ears, and it wouldn't reconnect to my phone. So I thought, oh, that's pretty annoying. I tried and I tried again to get it to pair. The things just wouldn't pair. So I had to reset the earbuds and then just try and pair them again. And it was very faulty, very faulty process. This right earbud here is definitely faulty. It often refuses to pair, even in mono mode. It has also a very slight buzzing sound, as opposed to the left one, which sounds fantastic. And it also turns itself off as well, it disconnects and turns itself off. So that was um, quite a disappointing experience. It, it will often, it will often just flash white like this instead of entering into pairing mode, and see it's just turned itself off again. In my Bluetooth settings, it will often say, could not connect to device, with no explanation given. So let me give you a short review of these things. They sound absolutely fantastic, but mine doesn't work. And I can see how these slip past quality control, because when I used them initially, they worked just fine. It was only after using them after, you know, half an hour or so, problems started to emerge. I've got to say, they are quite nice. If the right one behaved like the left one, I would give them like 5 out of 5. But because the right one doesn't work, I can only give it 5 out of 10. Because only half of the product works, you know. Fortunately, I did manage to get a refund. All thanks to AliExpress, which I had purchased these through. Because for some reason Soundpeats wouldn't actually look at my dispute I sent to them. They never even acknowledged it, and I have no idea why. They ignored it until AliExpress uh, gave me a refund. So anyway, I'm very curious as to what is actually inside one of these. I am very curious. Oh, it's turned itself on. Did I touch it? Probably not. I gotta know what's in here. So here I am, I'm in my shed, here are the sound peats, here is the right one, which never connects to anything, for reasons unknown, 
Well, it will eventually, but you've got to unpair it and reset it and look, it just turn itself off again. You've got to repair it and reset it and then repair it and then do cycles of resetting and repairing it until it actually works, which is why they're basically unusable. Every time you want to listen to some nice music, you've got to go through some kind of giant hassle of repairing the thing. So there is like a seam just along here with a nice rubber finish on it I've got to be honest I think the chances of me actually repairing this thing is like next to nothing but I do want to see what's what it's like inside now my sister has the Soundbeats True Dot which are the cheaper versions of these things contains exactly the same chipset and she has had no trouble whatsoever with them they have worked flawlessly she's never had to repair them either she just takes them out of the case and they connect to her phone both of them simultaneously it seems within a couple of moments not the case with this particular one Hmm. I'm starting to wonder whether this thing is held together with some kind of adhesive. I might be able to melt the adhesive with a bit of uh, heat. Nice and warm. Oh yes. Not like melting hot, but you know, just slightly uncomfortable to the touch hot. Just open up now. Got the leverage. <clears throat> it's durable, this thing. Well made, I tell you. This thing is glued. Oh, do I see some? Oh! Oh! I accidentally pulled off the wrong part. Interesting that. We've got two drivers here, both with quite strong man magnets on them, but only one pair of wires. That's under here. Under this little section. What is that? I think that might be the battery. What does that say? Oh, yes. 0 0.204 watt hours. But that's not where the electronics are. Oh, hey. I want the electronics. I found the little neodymium magnet, it's just here. There's actually two, there's one here underneath the right symbol. And there's another one just situated here. It is not coming apart easily. Man! What if I crush it in, the, in this vice here? Oh, I hear cracking plastic. Did that do something? Seam opening? Yeah, okay. There we go. Oh, I think I opened up the seam slightly then. I can get it open slightly. Aha. Now I can just go around the edges. Hopefully break the seal all the way around. Aha, uh -huh. yes, getting there. It's almost there. Aha, uh -huh. I think it's open. Is it open? Oh, grand reveal. Oh, beautiful. Look at that. It's got these little plastic clips around on the circuit board. It's got these little spring-loaded couple of contacts here for the capacitive sensor. You've got your two microphones here, which are all taped up. I believe these were either meant to be sweat resistant or water resistant to some degree. The microphone ports are basically just plain holes. So I don't see how the water would stop from going in. Unless it's firmly pressed up against this tape here. That would arrest the water slightly but it would eventually just seep in so it may only just be like 
sweat resistant or something. Why is that light solid? What does that mean? It's not connected to my phone at all. I was worried that it had, because knowing my luck I would tear it apart and then it would start working properly. But no, it's still just as broken as it always was, and in fact it's more broken. Now right here there looks like there's a little melted plastic button stopping from the circuit board from coming off, which is on the end of this long plastic post. So I'm just going to try and soften that a little bit. It's still begging for mercy. Hasn't given up on life. Impressive so far. Unlike my LED light which just died on me. Come on. There we go. There's the battery. Quite a sizable battery. There's the chip. Oh, there we go. 55 milliamp hour battery. Still alive. Still won't die. Still keeps on turning on. So here you go. If you want more of a dystopian styled earbud, you can just gut it like that and let it hang out out of your ear. Then you look like some kind of cyborg who's been in a fight or something. I'll peel back this microphone foam. See what's under. Oh, I pulled back the other side. I can see the port of the microphone now. See that hole there. You can see where the speakers connect here. Just for the sake of it, I'm going to retry and resolder the wire I broke off here. So at least I'll have a functioning, non-working earphone again. There we go. There we go. Does that look pretty fashionable? Hmm? Nice. Nice gutted earbud. Okay, so as one last desperate attempt, I've stripped all the wires and meltable uh, materials off it, and I'm just going to heat treat it also known as a solder reflow. I've just cranked the temperature up to about 324 degrees. Now I'll make it higher. Oh, 340. Show no mercy. Hmm, it is starting to smell. Is that rubber getting soft? Oh, that's real soft, that rubber. What do they put on this tar or something? All the tar is coming off, whatever this stuff is. Sticky, black. It smells. Oh, look. I've desoldered the chip. Oh, no, I didn't. The label came off the chip. Yeah. I cooked it for a little while now. Till it was nice and hot. Yep, yeah, that solder soft down there. So hopefully that reflowed some of the solder. Hello, future me here. I would just like to add that poking around in the soft melted rubber completely destroyed the earphones, as I believe I knocked off a bunch of components off the board. But despite my stupidity, I did manage to discover that you can completely reassemble the earbud till it looks almost as good as new. So it can actually be repaired by someone with a brain. Anyway, after reassembling them, I took them apart a second time for a closer inspection underneath a microscope. I have a stereoscopic microscope, which you will not be able to appreciate because you only have one eye, where I have two eyes, but you'll get a good idea. I did notice a little array of little blobs of solder on the circuit board, which looked like it should be the home for some little BGA chip. 
I don't remember knocking off a chip of that size off the board. But what does it matter now? Anyway, after doing that, I thought to myself, why not just cook it again? And what emerged from the goo was the chipset which Soundpeats advertised on their product. That Qualcomm 3020 chipset. So it's the real deal. So now I think I should come to my conclusions. It's not fair for me to leave anything close to what I would call a review on these things because only this one here actually works well. I've been using this one around the house, just had it in one ear because there's only one of them of course. And the reconnection it makes, you know, after I put it in pairing mode is, uh, you know, quite reliable. It never randomly disconnects, unlike the right one. And it also sounds fantastic. The microphones pick up my voice really well. In fact, the microphones pick up my voice so well that I can even use it for a voice assistant like Bixby. And if you ever use Samsung's Bixby, I'm sure that would impress you. So I would give this one 5 out of 5. I would give this one nothing because it no longer exists. Because I destroyed it, basically. But while I was destroying it, I was very impressed by its construction. They're very durable. And another thing I noticed was that when you get them open, it is actually possible to repair them in the sense that you can replace the battery if you can find a replacement battery for it. You know, so that's in this increasingly disposable world that we live in. It's quite um, impressive that a uh, Chinese product is actually more repairable than probably a Apple EarPod or whatever they call them. AirPod. What are, the, what are they called? An eye ear. No, that would be terrible. They wouldn't call it an eye ear. Anyway, I did manage to pull apart the other one and reassemble it without any trouble. So it is possible to repair it. Just don't do what I did and poke around in that black goo while you're trying to do a solder reflow. That was uh, probably the most stupidest thing I've ever done. But, you know, I just couldn't resist. It looks so black and gooey. I, I had to poke it. Yeah, the right one would always randomly turn off without warning. Or disconnect. Fit quite comfortably in my ear as well. So, I'm running out of things to say. I think I better go. Right. Goodbye. Hope you enjoyed this video and found it interesting.